uh, first, uh, let's just talk about all the different movements that are present in the hip joint. Uh, we all know that the hip joint uh, is a ball and socket joint, which has movements in all directions. Uh, and to add to it, we have movements of the rotations as well. So uh, it's quite a versatile joint. And uh, we are supposed to know what are the normal uh, movements for these joints. Okay. So the first movement, of course, is going to be flexion. So how do we check for flexion? We keep the patient supine on the couch. And uh, once we stabilize the pelvis, we make sure that there is uh, no fixed flexion deformity. And that we find out with the help of the Thomas test. If there is flex flexion deformity, then from the angle of the fixed flexion deformity, we are supposed to check how much further flexion is possible. Okay, so with the patient supine on the couch, uh, we flex the uh, hip of the patient. So a normal range of motion for this particular moment is going to be about 130 degrees. Uh, however, anything more than 110 is considered normal. Okay, so that's the moment that we are going to check uh, hip flexion, okay, uh, which is done supine on the couch. Okay, then we move ahead for extension now extension is checked either with the patient on the edge of the couch in the supine position or we can put the patient prone once we have put the patient prone we again stabilize the pelvis and check how much amount of extension is possible of course in cases where there is a fixed flexion deformity there will be no extension as there is already a fixed flexion deformity so no extension will be possible however in cases where there is full uh, hip a uh, full, uh, full range of uh, hip flexion from 0 to whatever degrees and there is no flexion deformity then we have to check for the amount of extension that is possible at the hip picture and this is done with the patient on the couch and the patient prone okay so that's the extension movement can be done both with the knee extended and the knee flexed okay then we put the patient supine on the couch to check for the abduction and the adduction. Okay, now abduction, again, we make sure that the pelvis is square before we check for the amount of abduction which is possible. If the pelvis is not square, we'll have to square the pelvis by either doing a flexion move or sorry, abduction movement or adduction movement uh, based on whether it's a uh, fixed abduction or fixed adduction deformity. Okay, so if the pelvis is square, then from that position, we check how much amount of free abduction is okay for a normal individual this will be about 0 to 45 degrees the amount of abduction is always going to be more than the amount of abduction that is uh, adduction that is possible okay so the amount of adduction that's possible is up 0 to 30 degrees so if you see here it's about 0 to 30 degrees the problems which we face here are going to be the problem of the other limb and the body going to come in the way okay so that's about uh, Abduction and adduction. Abduction is about 0 to 45 degrees and adduction is about 0 to 30 degrees. Anything more than uh, uh, 0 to 30 degrees is considered normal. Okay, excessive movements are not considered abnormal. Only restricted movements are considered abnormal. Okay, then we check for a rotation of the pelvis. We have both internal rotation as well as external rotation. Okay, uh, so there are many ways to check this. Uh, the first uh, and the most commonest way of which we generally check is with the patient prone. Okay, so, sorry, uh, is with the patient prone. But uh, if we take a step back, how do we check for rotations? We check first with the patient, with the hip and knee. Okay, first with the hip in extension, knee in extension, that is with the patient supine. Okay, so this is going to be like a log roll. We can check how much amount of internal and external rotation is going to be there. Okay, then we have a position with the hip flexed to 90 degrees and the knee flexed to 90 degrees with the patient supine. Okay, so this in this flex the knee of the patient to 90 degrees, hip of the patient to 90 degrees. Okay, and then check for the amount of internal and external rotation. Okay, so if this is the pelvis of the patient and this is the femur and this is the tibia coming down, any movements outwards is going to be a internal rotation. Any movements inwards is going to be an external rotation. 
Okay, so this is with the patient. Supine on the couch. That's the femoral component. That's the tibial component. Okay. Another method of doing is with the hip extended. and the knee flexed. For this, you'll have to put the patient prone. Okay, and that's uh, one of the uh, more, uh, what do you call, it? it's easier because you can visualize the angles on this. Okay, sometimes uh, the patient will not be able to flex the hip till 90 degrees. Okay, if that is again not possible, it's easier to put the patient prone. Okay, so these are the three different ways where we can check for the movements of the patient. Of course, when we check for movements in these three types, we can get different amounts of internal rotations and external rotations in all three of them. Okay, so that is where uh, we call it differential rotations and that is only possible when the ball, that is the femoral head, is aspherical. Okay, that means the shape of the femoral head or the acetabulum is aspherical. So conditions such as, say, SEFE and uh, Perthes disease, uh, sequelae, can lead to differential rotations in these three positions all right so now here we are going to explain with the patient prone okay the patient is prone so you are having the symphysis pubis here which is anterior okay and the sacrum uh, the sacrum which is absent here which is posterior okay which is more superior over here so that means the patient is prone okay so now with the patient prone we flex the hip to, uh, flex the knee to 90 degrees. That is why we can see the profile of the tibia. Then we internally rotate the hip. For internally rotating the hip, we need to take the leg outwards. So the leg is taken outwards for an internal rotation. A normal angle of internal rotation is about 0 to 30 degrees. And if we want to do an external rotation, then we have to take the leg inwards. Okay, so the leg goes inwards for external rotation and the leg goes outwards for internal rotation. Just remember that. Okay, so it's opposite to what you're trying. You're taking the leg out, but you're checking for internal rotation. You're taking the leg in, but you're checking for external rotation. Okay, so always remember another thing that internal rotation is always going to be lesser than the amount of external rotation which is possible. Okay, so if external rotation is 45 degrees, then internal rotation is 30 degrees. If external rotation is 30, this can be 20. So as a rule of thumb, internal rotation is going to be a little bit lesser than the amount of external rotation. But for normal values, you can write both of them as 45 degrees. Okay. So internal rotation, you can come down to as much as 30 degrees. Okay. So 30 to 45 is normal. External rotation, 0 to 45 degrees is normal. Okay. So that's about all the movements at the hips. Now we come to what is Craig's test. Craig's test is basically to measure the amount of femoral antiversion. So what is femoral antiversion? It is the angle which is developed which between the femoral neck and the femoral shaft. Okay. So how do we measure this? We measure this. So if you take an inferior view of the femur, we are looking at the femur from down. So here we have the femur. This is the inferior view. We are looking at the condyles up front and then we see far away that there is a femoral head also present. Okay, so we draw a posterior condylar line and we draw a line through the femoral neck. Whatever angle is formed here is the amount of antiversion that is present. Okay, so this is normally between 10 to 20 degrees, averaging about 14 degrees in a normal adult. Okay, so to check this, you need to do the Craig's test. Again, Craig's test is done with the patient prone. So we have to turn the femur upside down and then we have the leg here. Now, with the patient prone, we need to stabilize the pelvis with the same hand in which we are uh, with the st uh, stabilize the pelvis with one hand. Okay. And the same hand go over the pelvis and feel for the greater trochanter. Okay. So now instead of feeling for the greater trochanter, I have drawn a line here. If you can see there is a line, it is not an artifact. So you can see there is a line which is seen here. Okay, so this is your feeling of the greater trochanter you are getting right now with the patient prone. Okay, with the patient prone, knee flex to 90 degrees, you are feeling for the greater trochanter. Now you start rotating the hip and you check for 
the rotation at which the maximum amount of greater trochanter can be fed or where the greater trochanter is is fed most uh, uh, most uh, easily okay so now when we internally rotate the hip you see that the greater trochanter is coming more outside so it's becoming more and more palpable okay however this is at about 20 degrees of internal rotation so we check the lines we draw a straight line and we draw the line of the tibia so this is now going to be about 20 degrees okay so we further internally rotate to check whether further we can see that the uh, trochanter gets more palpable or not but on further internally rotating the trochanter goes away because you, it is going more and more forwards okay so now we externally rotate the hip and we check whether it's palpable now again on external rotation the greater trochanter is moving away from your fingers and hence it is not easily palpable okay so you get it back to 0 degrees okay and then check for it again at about 20 degrees again you are going to get it at that is over uh dey can you please uh, mute your this thing uh, thank you uh again at about 20 degrees you're going to feel that the uh, greater trochanter is the most palpable and this is your angle of antiversion so this is a clinical measurement for amount of neck antiversion that is present okay